Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Bibbity Bobbity Books. My name is Ellie and today I'm going to be filming a tag video. So I was very kindly tagged to do this by the lovely Jessie from the channel Jessie the Sleepy Koala who actually created her own tag which is so cool. It's all based on Brandon Sanderson's Cosmia. So Jessie has created a prompt for each of the worlds or the planets within Brandon Sanderson's wider Cosmia which is such a cool idea and yeah she's put so much effort into this tag so definitely definitely go and check out her original video I'll have it linked down below because she talks in quite a lot of depth about the prompts and the reasoning behind them and she gives you a bit more info on uh, Brandon Sanderson's Cosmia so definitely check that video out and also just check out Jessie's channel because she's such a ray of sunshine and I really really love her channel she reads a lot of fantasy books so I feel like if you like the kinds of books that I read you might also like her channel so definitely go over and subscribe I'll have all the links down below um, but anyway without further ado I'm just going to jump straight in and start talking through the prompts. So the first prompt is Roshar, name a book with fantastical world building. Now there are a lot of books I could have picked for this prompt because I tend to read quite a lot of adult fantasy and a lot of them have really fantastic world building but I've settled on Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. So this is a really blood drenched gothic adult fantasy story. It's the first in a new series and in this world the sun hasn't risen for the last 27 years which means that vampires Empires and cold bloods can roam the earth as they please and there has been this ongoing war between humanity and vampires and our main character in this story is a man called Gabriel who is actually the last living member of the Silver Order which is kind of like this holy brotherhood who protect the realm from the creatures of the night so they're kind of like uh, vampire killing crusaders which is just so cool and one of the things that I really enjoyed about this book was the world building because it is so gothic it's dripping with imagery and it was really fascinating finding out about the vampire lore in here because you've got different kinds of cold bloods some are more zombie like and some are more intelligent so that was really fascinating and it was also really interesting finding out about the silver order and also the nuns in this world and Jay Christoph has literally built an entire fictional religion which is kind of explored quite a lot in depth in this book which is so interesting because it's got its own history it's got its own mythology and it just made for a very well realized world so yeah I would highly recommend this to you if you're looking for something that's really gritty and if you like vampire stories but I'm talking dark vampires not like glittery vampires um definitely be warned that there is a lot of gore in this book and there's lots of profanity as well there's lots of swearing and stuff so I don't think it's going to be for everyone uh, but I really really enjoyed this and can't wait to continue on with the series the next prompt is Scardriel. I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing any of these wrong by the way, but it says name a book that contains both magic and technology. Now I found this quite a difficult prompt because I feel like books either contain one or the other and it's really hard to find one that contains both. I'm assuming it means fictional technology rather than normal everyday technology like mobile phones and stuff. So I've gone for a science fiction um, but I couldn't really think of a sci-fi that contains magic as well um, but the one that I've gone for is Dune by Frank Herbert um, so this is a classic science fiction it's the first in a really great series I'm sure you've probably all heard of this one before and there's recently been a movie that's come out based on this book as well um, but yeah this is a science fiction so obviously you've got those technology things you've got spaceships you've got um, high-tech weapons and shields and stuff but you also have some kind of magical elements in here because because basically in this world there is this really valuable substance known as the spice which is this psychedelic drug which is harvested on a planet called Arrakis and if you ingest or inhale this drug it basically gives you magic powers and um, so it heightens your awareness and it heightens your brain functioning and it can also prolong your life so I'm kind of counting that as magic even though technically it's a drug but there's also this really powerful order of women known as the Bene Gesserit and they go through extensive training so they train physically and mentally to basically give them superhuman powers which again looks kind of like magic so um, other characters in the book sometimes refer to the Bene Gesserit as witches so again I'm kind of counting that as magic even though technically it's not like magicy magic if you know what I mean um, but yeah this is a fantastic sci-fi series highly recommend it to you if you like well 
building as well this one is fantastic highly recommend this is a gorgeous cover as well and addition i love these sprayed edges this is the waterstones exclusive edition that came out recently and it is stunning <laughs> The next prompt is Nalthus, name a book with a colourful cover. So for this one, I have chosen My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This has one of the coolest book covers that I've ever seen. It's designed to look like an 80s VHS, which is so cool. And we've obviously got the bright stripes here and lots of colours on the gorgeous image on the front there. It is just such a cool addition. And I also really enjoyed this book. So this is an adult horror book and it kind of does what it says on the tin really. It's basically about a exorcism <laughs> um so we've got two sort of main characters in here we've got um abby and then we've got her best friend gretchen and then one day they all go skinny dipping and gretchen ends up getting lost and when she comes back she's acting kind of weird and the story kind of goes from there i wouldn't say that the plot is anything particularly surprising it's quite predictable but i don't necessarily think that's a bad thing and what i really enjoyed about this book is absolutely the setting because the eight is such a vibe and each of the chapters is actually titled with an 80s song so the first one is don't you forget about me we've then got we got the beats so it's so fun and you could technically kind of listen along to the soundtrack to this book if you wanted to really get into the 80s spirit and I just thought it was such a fun time I also think this would be a good place to start if you're looking to get into horror but you're not sure and you're a little bit nervous because it's not too scary because you kind of know what's coming and yes there are some really graphic and gruesome scenes in there but it's also offset with humour and what I also really enjoyed about this book was the relationship between the two best friends and I was really surprised to find myself um, kind of quite moved by the ending so yeah that was a nice kind of surprise with this book so yeah I would recommend this as a horror book. Prompt number four is Cell, name a debut novel. Now for this prompt I am going to pick The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. So this is an adult science fiction horror suspense novel and it honestly has one of the coolest premises for a book that I've ever come across. Now I have actually lent out my copy to a friend but I will put an image up on the screen so that you can see the cover because it is a very cool cover as well. Um, but in this story we follow our main character Gyra who really wants to get off planet so she's trying to get enough money so that she can leave and so that she can go and find her mother and one thing she decides to do is to basically go on this case exploration mission because it means that she will get a whole ton of money but she doesn't really have the full qualifications for a mission like that because you have to have extensive training so she kind of fudges her paperwork a little bit but she does end up getting the job and she goes down into this cave now in this world the caves are super dangerous and the only way you can really survive is by wearing these really high-tech suits that kind of uh keep you alive essentially so these suits can control your body temperature you have to be catheterized you even have to have surgery so that you can administer food straight into your stomach and normally you have an entire crew behind you to basically help you operate the suit and to make sure that you're safe but when Jairo goes down into the caves, she quickly finds out that the mission isn't quite what she thought. And rather than having a whole team behind her, she actually just has one handler who is a woman called M. So M is completely in control of the mission. M can control Jairo's suit. She can administer medication and drugs if she wants to. And she has all of the maps to the caves. So Jaira is super dependent on M and they have this really interesting and... Um, yeah, intense dynamic and the whole book is basically gyro going further and further into the caves and the things that happen from there i don't want to say too much because i don't want to give any spoilers but it is super suspenseful and really claustrophobic and you have very much this kind of creeping sense of dread and unease yeah but i really enjoyed it i think the whole idea of being stuck down in caves you know with no one to talk to but your one handler who has complete control of your suit is just absolutely terrifying so yeah i would recommend that if you think that that sounds interesting the next prompt is threnody name a spooky book so for this one i've actually picked a thriller so i've chosen the turn of the key by ruth where I really enjoyed this thriller book. I don't normally read thrillers but there was something about this book that really drew me in. So in this book we follow our main character Rowan who ends up getting this job as a live-in nanny in this really luxurious and isolated house out in the middle of nowhere in Scotland and the house is actually a really interesting place because it's 
basically a smart home. So there's lots of modern technology in this house. There's kind of surveillance cameras in every room. There's not normal light switches. Everything's done via these fancy panels. And that sounds really cool at first. However, it quickly becomes quite creepy when stuff starts malfunctioning and things kind of start to go wrong. So I loved the setting. I thought that was really interesting. And this book also has a trope that I love in it, which is basically when you're not sure if the main character is starting to lose her mind a little bit perhaps because she's a little bit sleep deprived and she's having to look after these really challenging children and she's also very isolated or if something paranormal is going on so I really enjoy that in a book so I liked the kind of creepy elements in here and there were definitely moments where I was a little bit spooked so yeah I would highly recommend this to you if you're looking for a spooky thriller Okay, prompt number six is Yolen. Name a book that shattered you. Now, I found this quite a difficult prompt because I haven't really read any books recently that have really shattered me. I can't think of anything that's really made me like cry or has really like destroyed me emotionally. I tend to steer away from sad books um, just because I read for escapism and I tend to be drawn to um, kind of more happy stories, I guess. I don't know. Um, but the one that I've chosen for this prompt is Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. So this is a standalone adult fantasy book and there were definitely moments in this story where I teared up a little bit so that's why I'm including this for this prom. So this book follows a man called Wallace who basically has a heart attack and is very surprised to find himself standing at his very own sparsely attended funeral and he ends up being taken to this quirky tea shop where he meets a man called Hugo who's basically dedicated his life to helping people like Wallace to cross over to whatever comes next. So the tea shop kind of acts like a way station for the dead who aren't quite ready to pass on yet and so the story is very much about Wallace's personal journey. He has to kind of accept his situation accept his death and also accept the fact that he perhaps made some poor choices during his life and um yeah it's a really touching story it's got a real found family element to it um and it's got great characters and what I like about this story is that while it's talking about some pretty heavy topics we've got death and grief and stuff in here it's offset with TJ Clune's humor and his kind of quirky writing style which I really enjoyed so yeah I had a nice time with this book the only thing I would say is that the ending um I wasn't 100% on board with I think it could have been a lot more impactful if it ended in a slightly different way but I still enjoyed this novel and as I said it did make me tear up at times so yeah I would recommend this to you if you're looking for something that has a very light exploration into kind of grief and if you think the premise sounds cool Prompt number seven is Vax. Name a book that is not well known. So for this one, I have chosen Chilling Effect by Valerie Valdez. So this is a sci-fi book that I picked up on a whim. I was largely drawn in by the cover because it's so striking and fun. Um, I really enjoy that we've got little cats on here with space helmets on. And yeah, I just thought this would be quite a lighthearted and fun read. I haven't actually picked it up yet, but it's high up on my TBR. I'm planning to figure up this month so keep an eye out for my wrap up if you're um, interested to hear my thoughts on this one but yeah this sounds like a really kooky sci-fi novel and I believe we follow our main character Ava who is a captain of a ship that delivers small cargo for even smaller profits and after a job gone wrong her crew end up with a ship full of psychic cats who are trying to hypnotize them and Ava basically finds out that her sister is being held captive by this crime syndicate known as the fridge and she has to find a way to save her. I think this is going to be really fun and silly and lighthearted and the perfect kind of fluffy sci-fi that I would want to pick up in the summer. The next prompt is Taladin, name a book with two halves. So the suggestions for this prompt are a book that has two POVs in it or two time periods or two prominent places. So the book that I've chosen for this prompt is Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. This is a science fiction horror book and it has two timelines in it, which is why I've chosen it for this prompt. So in this story, we follow Claire and her crew who are out on a repair mission in space and they stumble 
stumble across this distress beacon and they decide to go and investigate and it turns out that the distress beacon is coming from this huge luxury cruiser which actually went missing many years ago and was a bit of a mystery so Claire and her team decide to go and investigate this ship and creepy stuff starts to happen that's all I'm gonna say but yeah there are two timelines in this book so there's past and present so present day we've got Claire who is in a rehabilitation center and she is being questioned about what happened when her crew found this luxury cruiser and then we've got the past which is obviously what actually happened and it is a wild ride it's definitely very dark so check out the content warnings in this one but it kept me on the edge of my seat I also loved the setting for this one because the luxury cruiser is actually designed to look like an old earth sea ship so it's literally like the Titanic floating out in space which is such a fun setting for a horror book and yeah I really enjoyed this one I will say though that the sci-fi elements are quite light in here so if you're a big sci-fi fan you might be a little bit disappointed so just keep that in mind but yeah it was a wild ride the next prompt is first of the sun name a book with animals in it so for this prompt I have decided to go for Circe by Madeline Miller. So this is a Greek mythology retelling, it's obviously focusing on the character of Circe and it's basically her story. So Circe is a goddess, she is the daughter of the sun god Helios and she has a very difficult upbringing, she has a tense relationship with her family and the other gods around her, she's seen very much as a lesser inferior goddess and so she turns to the mortals for companionship and whilst there she kind of finds out that she has the power of witchcraft which is actually very rare among the gods and is actually really powerful so she becomes quite a threat to Zeus who ends up banishing her to this island and we follow this character as she experiences kind of other events from Greek mythology from her imprisonment on the island and we spend a lot of time with her kind of honing her witchcraft powers and she's very much connected to nature and the animals around her on this island so they kind of bend to her will and she has this pet lion which is really cool. Yeah I enjoyed this story although I will say that it was quite slow paced and I didn't find the plot that engaging because it's just quite meandering we're basically just sitting with the main character um, but that being said the writing is gorgeous so if you're a fan of luscious writing and you like Greek mythology I think you're really gonna love this one okay prompt number 10 is a braise I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong um, but it's to name a book about war so for this one I've chosen The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker so this is a retelling of Homer's Iliad and is told from the perspective of the women who are essentially collateral damage in the Trojan War so the main perspective in here is of a woman called Briseis who ends up being um, taken as Achilles wife she's kind of like his war prize after he basically obliterates her town and and um, so we have a really interesting perspective from her and this is a very kind of brutal um, and real um, kind of take on war. It doesn't shy away from the harsh realities of war and it's so interesting seeing things from the girls and women's perspective who are very much kind of behind the scenes in the Trojan War and yeah it's a really fascinating read. It's definitely quite difficult to read at times. Again definitely check out the content warnings for this one because is it's pretty brutal um, but yeah I thought it was really fascinating that Pat Barker gave us a slightly different perspective and a different look at some of the characters and the stories that we know from Greek mythology and um, because we see it through Briseis's eyes and it's just a very different take so yeah I really enjoyed that and would highly recommend this to you if you're a fan of historical fiction and if you're a fan of Greek mythology because it was excellently done in my opinion Okay, and the final prompt is Ashen. Name a book about a broken peoples. Now for this prompt, I have chosen The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. I had to get a Brandon Sanderson book on there somewhere. Um, I saved it till the end, but I think this book is perfect for this prompt because this is set in a world where there is a lot of oppression. So there is a whole group of people called the Scar who are heavily oppressed. And in this world, there is this tyrant Lord Ruler who is pretty evil 
people <laughs> and um, the kind of premise of this book is that there are a band of people who are coming together to try and overthrow this evil lord ruler um, so that they can liberate the scar and so they can kind of build society again um, so yeah this is a whole lot of fun I really enjoy the magic system in this world because in this book there are some people who can ingest and harness the power of metals which is really cool and each different metal gives you a different ability and there are also some very rare people called Mistborn who can ingest and harness the power of all of the metals um, and that's just really cool I love the way that Brandon Sanderson uses the magic during the fight scenes and yeah it's a fun time so um, yeah I would highly recommend this if you're looking for a fun fantasy book with a great magic system I also think this would be a good place to start if you're looking to get into adult fantasy because although there is quite a complex magic system in here and there's quite a lot of politics going on it's written in a really accessible way and it's such a fun kind of story um the kind of rebellion plot line that I think it's not too um scary if that makes sense and yeah that brings me to the end of this video um the last prompt is just to tag some friends so I'm gonna tag Kirsten from Reading Nymph Theo from Rekindled Reader, Steph from Skin with Steph, Rosica from The Midnight Reader and Harriet from Harriet's Book Corner. They are all fabulous booktubers and have wonderful, wonderful channels so definitely check them out. I'll have all their links down below. Or if you're just watching this video and you fancy giving this tag a go, please consider yourself tagged. Or let me know what your answers would be down in the comments below because I'd love to have a little chat with you in the comments. And yeah, I guess that's it from me for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I guess I'll see you next time with another one. Bye!